everyone. Welcome to Rob's Wrestling Reviews. I wanted to let everybody know that this episode will be the last episode under the Rob's Wrestling Reviews name. I will officially be changing the name to Rob's Raw Take starting next week. I learned there are a lot of shows that seem to be called Rob's Wrestling Reviews or here on YouTube, and I just felt I should have probably change it up a little bit to give myself a little bit of a little bit of a difference. That being said, this is your review for 205 Live and NXT. First up, 205 Live. 205 Live starts with a recap from last week, showing the really insanely good match between Cedric Alexander and Roderick Strong. Uh, then goes to the main show. Starting with a match between Hideo Itami, who is coming out with Akira Tozawa, taking on Lente Dorado, who is coming out with Grand Metalik, and Kalisto. Now this was actually a pretty decent match. Uh, there were some really good strikes from Itami. He hit a really wicked spin kick that really looked devastating. Uh, but eventually, the match kind of ended in a scuttlebutt as. Uh, Hideo Itami got in the face of Grand Metalik, who he had issues with last week. Uh, Grand Metalik then shoved Itami, which led to the DQ of Lente Dorado. This led to a big ar argument, a little fight between Lente Dorado, Grand Metalik, and Hideo Itami. Callisto and Akira Tozawa both tried to defuse the situation, let him tell him the core heads prevail in this situation. Next, we get a video package with Drew Gulak, who is hyping up his upcoming match with uh, Mustafa Ali. He talks about how he was kind of treated as a goof for a, while, for a good while, as he was bringing out the uh, PowerPoint presentations, and he's tired of being a goof. Uh, he really does feel like his style of wrestling is superior than all the flyers, and, he, and now he's ready to just prove it to everyone. Next, we get a really quick sit down with Cedric Alexander, uh, recapping a little bit from last week. He says he went through hell to get to his match at WrestleMania, and this is only the beginning. Next, we have TJP taking on Kenneth Johnson, who we saw a, for one quick match uh, during the Cruiserweight Classic a couple years ago. Uh, I thought he looked really good then. Uh, with his match with Akira Tozawa. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check that match out. It's really good. Uh, this match was actually pretty good too, uh, but it's standard squash fare though. Johnson looked pretty good, but obviously he was there to sell for TJP. Quickly, TJP ends up blocking in the knee bar. Uh, Kenneth Johnson taps. Uh, TJP holds on to the knee bar for a good <laughs> much longer than the five seconds that they normally give them uh, and then finally lets go and gives, does his little dab and walks off. Uh, that was a good match. Next we have a backstage segment with Mustafa Ali. He talks about being a police officer in Chicago. Uh, he also talks about when a lot of times when people hear the name Mustafa Ali they tend to boo of the name and the kind of connotation connotations to a name like that and he's out to prove a person should not be treated uh, differently just because of their name or how they look he wants to change that perception next we hear from Drake Maverick who says he's livid for from what happened earlier in the night with uh, Hideo Itami and Lince Dorado and Grand Metalik he said uh, he's tired of people letting their anger get a hold of him. He he wants cooler heads to prevail, and for that he is uh, actually rewarding uh, Callisto and Akira Tozawa for trying to break up the fight. Uh, he's giving them uh, he so since there is a championship match at WrestleMania, that champion will need a number one contender to face. Uh, so next week, Akira Tozawa, Callisto, TJP, and Buddy Murphy, who he said looked really good in the tournament, is also going to be put into the match. 
so this will be a fate of four way for the number one contendership for the cruiserweight title. Uh, and finally, we have uh, Drew Gulak versus Mustafa Ali. This was another great match. I don't know if I would say it was as good as last week's match. This match was fantastic as well. Uh, Drew Gulak using all, all of his ground basis offense, uh, a lot of vicious torques, <laughs> torquing submissions, uh, brutal strikes. Uh, there was some really nasty slams in the announcer's table. Uh, a lot of times uh, Drew Gulak would try to get a count out victory by just beating on Gulak. Uh, laying him out, getting back in the ring, trying to get a count out victory. But every time Ali would get back in the ring, showing his perseverance, uh, and eventually he, uh, Ali is able to overcome everything, uh, get get Gulak down long enough to hit the 054 for the 123. Uh, he will go on to WrestleMania to face Cedric Alexander. I cannot wait to watch that match. Uh, I I actually was expecting Drew Gulak just because of the heel face dynamic, but this this should be a fantastic cruiserweight championship match. Uh, I I can't wait to see it. They're two of the best athletes going. Uh, I expect no different, no no less than a really good uh, just athletic match. Now on to NXT. NXT starts with Tommaso Ciampa making his way to the ring, uh, much like the last two weeks, coming out to a parade of booze. But this time he actually does speak. Uh, as the fans are chanting for Johnny Gargano, he's like, you guys don't get it. He's not going to come down that ramp. He's going. I got rid of him. Uh, he starts to go out the ring, starts tearing up more signs, uh, John, more Johnny Gargano signs. Uh, he, he eventually tear, rips one out of someone's hand, and it just ha so happens that Johnny Gargano was the one holding that holding that sign uh, to a gigantic pop from the crowd. He starts laying into Champa. Gargano is eventually carried off by security. Uh, really good segment. Uh, really capped off the last few weeks uh, finally finally seeing Johnny Gargano come out back and and fight Champa uh, he says this isn't over uh, it's far from over uh, we know what's going to come and we're going to have probably one of the matches of the year at takeover cannot wait to see it I've been wanting to see that since Champa turned on Gargano uh, can't, yeah, this is going to be fun to watch. Next, we get a segment where Tyler Bate is reluctantly uh, saying that uh, Mustache Mountain have to have to take themselves out of the Dusty Classic as he he's received an injury and will take a few weeks to heal and it will last longer than uh, his match was supposed to take place this week and he would be injured. Before and he would still be injured during that time, uh, so uh, Mustache Mountain will have to be replaced. Uh, Roderick Strong has shown uh, asking William Regal to let him find a tag team partner and let him take Mustache Mountain's place. Uh, he is given that opportunity. Uh, they will be facing Oni Lorcan and uh, Danny Birch. Uh, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan come out for their match. Uh, Roderick Strong comes out, and his tag team partner is the UK champion, the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. Uh, I like that idea. Uh, they've been kind of te they kind of teased that last week, uh, and this was this was a really tough, stiff match. A lot of stiff shots in this match. Uh, they're because all, all four guys are can be really stiff, uh, especially Danny Birch and Pete Dunne, uh, both known for being really tough strikers, uh, and they just they just 
wailed into each other with forearms and uppercuts. Uh, there were some really nasty looking uh, shots from Danny Birch. Eventually, Roderick Strong is able to hit the end of Heartache onto Danny Birch for the one, two, three. Next, we get a hype package uh, revealing the upcoming debut of Ricochet. He's not Trevor Mann. He's not Rick O'Shea. He is Ricochet. Uh, he it says, and it says that he will be coming soon. Uh, can't wait to see that. Uh, if you haven't seen his stuff from the Indies, you really need to check that out. He is one of the best high flyers in the world. Uh, uh, he's gonna. Uh, there's no way he's gonna have a hard time in NXT. Uh, I see a lot of big things coming up. Next, we get a match between Ember Moon and Aaliyah. Uh, this is a quick match, not much to it. Uh, Shayna Baszler uh, comes out and decide, goes to the commentary table to observe the match. Again, this is a quick match. Uh, Ember pretty much dominated the whole match uh, and wins with the Eclipse. Uh, next, we're given a quick hype package saying that next week the Authors of Pain will be taking on the Street Profits uh, and Insanity will be taking on Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong. Those should be some really good matches. Uh, especially, I think especially the Strong Dunne taking on Sanity should be really good. Uh, I can't wait to see that next week. Uh, next, Raul Mendoza is coming out, but he doesn't come out for very long as he is thrown off the stage by Andrade C. and Amos. Uh, he come, him and Zelina Vega come to the ring, uh, speaks a lot of Spanish. Sorry, don't know any Spanish, but he sure sounded angry. Next, we get a quick Lars Sullivan video package uh, saying he will be back next week. After a lengthy absence, I believe he got hurt uh, a few months back, and so he's been taking some time off. Uh, so, but he will be back next week. And finally, we have Cassius Ono versus Adam Cole. Uh, this was this was a really good match. Uh, I like that they've really been letting Adam Cole really go, and he's not just playing chicken shit hill now. He's, they're really letting him go now. Uh, I I like Adam Cole as that kind of heel, but sometimes you gotta let him. You gotta let a guy do what they can do. Uh, and him and Cassius Ono put on a really really good match. Uh, Adam Cole picking his spot, taking advantage any time Cassius would make a mistake. Cassius getting in some really good, a lot of his good elbow strikes. He eventually knocks Cole out of the ring. And finally Cole starts giving a super kick party to Cassius. Uh, he eventually hits his uh, Shining Wizard for the 1-2-3 to finish off the night. Uh, this, all in all, totally this has been <laughs> probably one of the best weeks in wrestling I think anybody could imagine. Uh, uh, and this was a nice little way to cap off the week with a nice little match between Cassius Ono and Adam Cole. I can't wait to ne for next week. Uh, uh, after everything from on the Raw and SmackDown from this week to 205 Live and NXT, uh, there's some really good stuff brewing. Uh, 205, might, 205 Live might suffer a little bit because there's not uh, they won't have any of the tournament matches, but there should still be some really good matches next week, uh, especially with them with the Atami uh, with the Atami uh, Grand Metal League and Lince Dorado stuff. That's actually starting to look really good. Uh, NXT should be really good next week with the two Dusty Tag matches. Uh, uh, I I cannot wait for next week. Uh, I've been Rob Reed. I'll see you next week under the new title of Rob's Raw Take. 
uh, for your Raw and SmackDown review. Like this video, uh, comment below, subscribe if you're new. I'll see you on the next video.